Hey guys, thanks for the click. Today I'm going to build a hypercube. The most challenging part of this project is building the inner LED cube, so that's where I'm going to start. I decided on a size of 5 inches for the cube because anything smaller I think would be a nightmare. So the first thing I'm going to do is build a jig to connect the LEDs in the shape of a cube. So what better thing to use as a jig than a 5 inch wooden cube that I bought on Amazon. I took the cube to the garage and dusted off my router. Using a 45 degree chamfer bit, I cut 45 degrees off each corner of the cube. Now each corner has a flat 45 degree surface to lay and tape the LED strips to. Now let's talk about the LEDs. The LED strip I'm using has 144 LEDs on the 3.2 foot strip. It also has a mini controller to change the modes. I cut off the first LED strip on the power side. This will be used as a reference later. I use an X-Acto knife to cut the LED strip, trying to leave as much of the copper soldering pads as possible. I put the LED strip against the cube and I determine how long my strip has to be. I count out 15 LEDs for the length of this strip. Using the X-Acto knife again, I cut the strip to size, making sure I leave as much of the copper soldering pads as possible. Then I use it as a template to cut out 11 more strips since I will need 12 in total. Now I have to prepare the strips for soldering. Note, since the LEDs will be facing inward to the cube, I will be soldering on the back side of the LED strip. So I have to remove the protective backing and the double sided adhesive film that is on the back of the strip. I get an X-Acto knife and I start to lift and peel the adhesive film off the strip. Doing this will ensure a clean surface for soldering. Once I peel back about a half an inch, I get the X-Acto knife and I cut it off. I remove the adhesive film from the 11 remaining strips on both ends. I then tin each one of the copper pads with solder. This will make soldering wires to it a lot easier later. Now let's take a second to discuss the LED strip. You'll notice that the power side has three wires connected to it. Red is your 5 volts, white is your ground, and green is your data. You'll also notice the arrows on the strip. That indicates the direction of the data flow. That is very important when connecting to the next strip. You must connect the green data to the next strip where the data is going in the same direction on that strip. If not, your LED strip will not work properly. Here is the layout of the LED strip placement on the cube. Starting at A, it will show the direction of the data. I also labeled the strip with the alphabet, because this way you can't go wrong when connecting the strips together. A goes to B, B goes to C, C goes to D, and so on and so on. So I decided to cut these strips on my Glowforge laser cutter on 16th inch two-tone black acrylic, and to adhere these acrylic pieces to the back of the LED strip. This will serve two purposes. Number one, it will stiffen the LED strip, and number two, it will give you all the strip information at a glimpse when you you are soldering them together, such as data flow and where your 5 volts and ground connections are. Now let's flip the LED strip over and place the acrylic piece on top of the strip. You can clearly see how it identifies where your red and white connections are, as well as the data flow. So let's go ahead and stick it to the back of the LED strip. Now that we got that one done, let's go ahead and get the information strip stuck on all the rest of the LED strips. Now I get my cube jig and I start to place the first LED strip onto the jig with blue tape. All you have to do is look at the placement diagram and place them in the correct order. A to B. B to C, and C to D. You shouldn't have a problem if you know your alphabet. Continue to stick the first eight strips to the jig.
After verifying the correct placement on the cube, it is now time to connect all the green data lines to all of the LED strips. I start off with a small piece of 30 gauge wire and I solder it to the B end of the strip. Then I solder the other end of the wire to the C end of the strip. You can check the data flow direction, but we know it's correct by looking at the arrows on the black acrylic strips. I now turn the cube on its side to continue the data run from C to D on the LED strip. I get a longer piece of green wire and I solder it to the middle connector on the strip. Now this data run has to run up the leg and connect to the E point on the next strip. So I remove the blue tape and run the wire underneath the leg to position it to the next point. I then cut the wire to size and solder it to the E point on the next strip. I continue this process of connecting the green data line until I have connected all eight LED strips. I just make sure to follow the diagram to ensure that I am correct with my connections. All in all, it's more tedious than difficult. Just with a little patience, you'll be done in no time. I am now done connecting the data on the first eight LED strips. I'm just double checking to make sure everything looks good. Now it's time to go on to the next step. At each one of the four corners, I'm going to want to connect all the five volts or red connections together. Using small pieces of wire, I carefully solder all the red connectors together. In a nutshell, I am connecting all the five volts in parallel. Now I'm going to connect all the ground wire or white connections together using small pieces of wire. This too is connecting all the ground in parallel. Now that I'm done with the wiring for the first eight strips, let's go ahead and move on to the next step. I now remove the blue tape from the jig to release the LEDs. I reinforce each corner with blue tape to keep the structure from collapsing. I remove the LEDs and place them on the table and I put aside the cube jig. I made another jig out of 3 quarter inch material that is 5 inches by 5 inches. And at each corner I made 45 degree cuts like I did on the cube. I then cut a piece of PVC pipe to the height that makes the top of the wood jig stand at 5 inches. I then taped down the four vertical legs to the jig. I got the remaining four LED strips and I taped them in the correct order onto the jig. So I finished connecting and soldering the last four LED strips using the steps we used on the other eight. After removing all the tape and the jig, we are left with this beautiful LED cube. But will it light? So after a few more measurements, I cut out a couple of cardboard boxes on my Glowforge so I could test fit the LED cube to them. And here's my plan. The first box will be made of two-way mirror acrylic and will house the LED light cube. This box will then fit into another box with windows as to hide the seams of the mirrored box. So after fitting it all together, it's time to cut them out of the real material. I'll start with the outer box first. Before assembling this box, I will have to apply some quarter inch double sided tape to the inside of each wall. This will adhere the two way mirror acrylic pieces when inserted. So let's do this to all the pieces before I assemble the box. I adjusted for the kerf on this box cut and the fit was nice and tight. So tight that I did not use glue. And trust me, this box is not coming apart anytime soon. It is solid. So now I'll cut out the pieces for the two-way mirror acrylic box. The 
fit is perfect and I push it down to ensure good adhesion. I then remove the backing off of the two-way mirror. I now repeat all the previous steps to adhere the remaining two-way mirror panels to the box. I finally connect power to the beginning of the LED strip at location marked A. I now insert the LED cube into the two-way mirror box. I now run the wire through a hole that I cut on the side. So this just about finishes this project. So let's just sit back and take this build to completion. Well guys, this wraps up another project and thank you so much for watching. This is one of my favorite builds and I can't wait to display it at my next party as a conversation piece. So until my next build, hope to see you then and God bless. Have a great day.